Hey guys, Sarko Cycle FPV. It is Monday, or sorry, Sunday, uh, May 17th, and it is about 9.47 in the morning, and I had a packed house of kids last night, so they're just waking up, so expect some interruptions as they come say good morning or what have you. But anyways, we're going to do a real quick video here, and what we're going to do the video on, let me show you. Uh, the video is going to be on this board right here. Let me do a picture and picture for you here. Boom. It's going to be on this one. The Well, it's going to be a video on how to put USB ports back on, right? And actually, I needed to share the computer real quick. I forgot to do that. So give me one second because I want to show you this screen too. And let me get up here and close this. And then let me do it again. Let's see if I can get the computer screen on here. There it is. Okay. So, and what I've done is I've actually taken the port out and, uh, well, the port was broken off. It was sent back by a customer and, uh, as soon as I get there we go so I'm gonna show you this so here's the port under the microscope right and so you can see this thing has kind of been all bent and what have you and I, unfortunately and there's a warning on the website about this but with this particular board um, uh, let me take this front one off here so this particular board there you go uh, does have an issue the USB is actually mounted to the bottom right underneath the XT60 ports and so the problem is that uh, people will heat these up a lot and then go straight to plug in their USB and that's kind of made this a little loose. So the warning is to be very careful, let it cool down and stuff. But people, it still happens and then they get bent about it. And I was like, okay, look, let's see if we can show you how to fix this. So here's what I've done. Um, I'm actually going to show you this under the microscope because we're going to try to fix this one. But if not, we'll just use a new port. But I'm going to just tr try to show you how this would work, okay? So the first thing is you want to make sure your pins are all straight and as best as they can be right and i'm i'm applying uh, my flux paste this pen right here this flux uh, the flux pen right now right what i want to do is uh just looking at this I, it looks like these were really bent i straightened about initially uh but i'm going to do a little bit more right here just on this one you got to be very careful because if you don't have a microscope it could be a little bit harder to do this but in either case it's still possible um so let me just, because these, these pins are very sensitive, right? So they're going to bend instantly if something goes wrong. So, um, all right, once you put your flux pen on there and you get it going, the next thing you want to do is get a really nice, nice fine tip um, uh, soldering iron, right? And we just want to apply a very, you know, just try to tin these. And it's not easy to tin these, I'll, I'll admit it, but it's not that hard either. You just have to be careful. So I'm going to hold this in place with the tweezers, and I'm just going to kind of brush tin I'm gonna brush some solder on here and trust me I know it's got it all together bridge but that's fine what I want to do is I just want to get it on and apply it and then I'll go from underneath and I'll start pulling it off okay little by little I'll pull it off and just leave it on the pins okay so that's why you want and then, now there's other ways I don't have to bridge it but I do it just because it makes it a little easier for me to make sure that everything's applied evenly and so I'll take that you see and we're clearing it off right now and then we're gonna do this last one here I'll clean it off nicely. All right, so there you go. Those have now been tinned and they're ready to be soldered, okay? Now, the only other thing left is you have to think about, you have to consider how you're going to hold this down. So the next thing is we're going to go ahead and tin the pad itself here. So we're going to get our flux pen again, right? And this time we're going to go ahead and we're, again, holding it with the tweezers. tweezers. I'm just going to go ahead and apply a little bit of flux on each side here. And then I'm going to put a little drop of solder on the ends because I'm going to solder this to the flight controller. All right, so let me just go ahead and apply the solder. All right, so here's the solder on the tip of the uh, soldering iron. Okay, I'm just gonna put a little bit right here, and I'm gonna put a little bit right there. All right, now that's all I need. Now that's ready to go onto the board. Okay, so now let's grab the board. All right, actually, you wanna just use your tweezers to pick this up because it's hot and you don't wanna bend those pins. All right, here's the board, okay, and here's where it goes. So you can see right here where it was uh, stuck, right? See the spots here? And it just kind of, it gets hot and they it pulls off, especially because it's right under the XT60. I like the board. Um, there are some flaws with it, but for the price, it's like, look, um, for the price, you can't beat it, but you gotta be careful, okay? So now what we wanna do is we wanna pre-tin this again as well. So um, we know that we just tinned uh, these areas here, right? Because that's where we're gonna kind of mount it down. So let's just put a little bit of tin right there. All right, let's pre-tin this area here. Let me get this to see if I can get this just to stick. Come on. The flux is a little wet, so I have to wait for it to heat up just a little bit there. All right, I'll come back to that spot when it dries. Now let's go back and go over these spots too. And let's just see what we got here, okay? So we want to get here. We want to basically just make sure that we have these ready to tint. And again, it may come across bridged at the beginning, but then once you run it through, it will be clean, okay? So you can do that, and then you can go through. And 
there we go okay so those are ready to go so now what I want to do is I want to take I got to angle this in a way so I can get to it while you guys are watching so let me see if I could do this now I've never done this under a microscope I've tried and it's failed quite a bit I've never successfully done it but I'm going to try something new this time and hopefully this will work so there's my board right and now I'm going to bring the USB port okay and I'm just going to flip it over you guys can't see this yet but it is under the microscope it's just not in view so we want to make sure that this God darn it, it's flying all over the place hold on we want to make sure <laughs> that it lines up properly right so let me grab that and let's see if we can get it to line up first okay <clears throat> and I get it's a rough it's a kind of a rough lineup but nonetheless you want to get it to line up okay so the first thing we want to do is see if we can get the pins to line up and we're looking at these pins they're very hard to see I guess but you'll see them line up here so something like that looks like they're lined up pretty good right but now we need to solder this back in place so what we want to do is we want to let me see if I get you a side here so remember we put solder here on the sides of the USB and that's what we're going to try to use to tack this down and I'm actually going to I'm going to keep spinning this around a little bit until I find a comfortable spot where I don't mind holding it where I'm comfortable holding it okay so we want to line this up line these up right and we also want to get our side spots ready to be soldered okay so once you line this up just kind of like that uh, it's not easy I promise you when it comes to lining it up because the whole thing wants to move let me try this a little bit different here let me use my fingers just a little bit because I need to tack this down and that's going to be the hardest spot is tacking it down and making sure I'm in the right place right so I'm going to try my best to put it where it should go like right here but I need to see if I'm in the right spot. So if that looks lined up, which it, it kind of does, that right there, let's say. Okay. Now it's to hold it in place. I may just try to tag one of these little pins real quick, but again, this thing's moving all over the place, so bear with me. Again, it's doing it under the microscope is not the easiest for me, but I'm trying to do it so you guys can watch. So let's just see if I can get it maybe like this. I just want to get one spot right here, let's say. Okay, so let's try that. And I'm just going to try my best to get this piece. And if I can just get one to stay, that does look like it stayed. So now what I need to do is I need to heat up the solder and try to bring this USB down. Okay. So the USB is now actually stuck on the board. All right, I got one pin to get soldered on. So you can see it's, it's stuck on there now. But now we need to bring it down because it's sitting at this awkward angle. And that's because we have this solder at the bottom here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my... I'm going to see if I can try to show you this a different way as well. Not sure it's going to come out here, but let me see. Let me see if I can just kind of give you a larger view of this. So let's let's there we go. Okay. So look at from this angle, and you can see that it is uh, it's kind of sitting up. You see, because we have this solder here that we have to melt to mount it, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to now come in, and I'm going to use the back of my tweezers to kind of press down on it like this while I bring my soldering iron in and try to heat this up so that it'll just kind of gently fall in place all right so just kind of be patient because you don't want to press it too much or you're gonna it's gonna break right off the piece here right so just get it to heat up okay and it's coming down not not quickly i'll tell you that so let me let me see if i can make this happen a little bit easier Okay, we got this side down. And now we wanna go back. Let's see if we can get this side here. I 
I wish I could keep this on the camera. All right, now that it's tacked down, let's look at where our pins are, okay? So we've got our pins lined up, and now what we wanna do is we just basically wanna come in and touch each pin. I'm gonna need my magnifier for this one because I can't see that. So we wanna to basically touch each pin, right, briefly here, just briefly touch each pin. So that's why you need a very fine point. But here goes, okay? Let me bring this closer to me. Okay, so the next pin is this one here. You wanna bring it down, there you go. That one, that one, that one, that one, and that one. And it looks like we have all five pins now soldered in place. Now, this last one I wanna check again because it looks a little whoppy jawed, but let me just, okay. Now, I'm going to put just the smallest bit right there make sure I get a good hold on that last one and at this point I believe that these are all now attached okay and granted this is a little bit crooked but we are using a the same soldering uh, let me see if I can heat this up now because I want to I want to try to straighten this as much as I can but I don't want to push my luck because if you keep heating it up you'll end up taking those right off and I'm going to try to keep this on camera so bear with me a minute so what I want to do is I want to just try to heat this up here, if I can, safely. There we go. There we go. Okay. So now what we've done is we've got, we've got our USB back on. Okay. And we need to now reinforce. Let's just go ahead and reinforce this. I mean, that's the, the main thing is to make sure we reinforce this pad. Okay. So I'm going to now heat it up a little bit more now that we know we got the pins on. Matter of fact, let me add just a tad bit of solder because it doesn't look like it's melting easy enough. Let me just add a little bit of solder to that. And all we want to do is again, just press down on it and just try to heat this up so that it can at least go down a little bit. Or we can hold it in place like that. I mean, whatever, as long as we've got a solid and it does look pretty solid, I'm looking at both sides of this. So I've got this one here as well. Let me see if I can focus on that for you. Okay, so we'll just try to clean this up a little bit but it looks pretty solid on there. Okay. All right. So reusing the same USB port, um, it looks like our pins are in place. Uh, I believe that they're in place. I don't think we're going to have any issues. No. And so now, and what I will do usually is put a, a bead of hot glue right under that. But for the sake of just checking this out, now let's see what happens when we connect it in Betaflight, just to make sure that we have a good connection. Now be careful here, because if you're not sure about how you did, right, here's, here's our, whoops, let me do it this way. Oh, I'm messing this whole thing up. So let's try this here and here, and there we go. Okay, so let's open Betaflight. And then like I was about to say is if you're not sure about your connection yet, if you're a little worried about it, just be gentle when you try to plug this in, right? So here goes. I'm going to get our USB cable. I'm going to hold my USB right now just because I want to be careful with it. And I'm going to see if I can get this to attach. Actually, let me check that out. Hold on a second. So it looks like I may have... Okay, so going back to the... Going back here now, let's look at something here. Okay, and I'm going to go open this again, and I'm going to have this USB power search because the plug, I think one of my pins is touching now that I looked at it better. So looking at this, it looks like I may be touching the second and the last pin here. So the second, the last, and the last may be, I, just, I don't see it touching here. And I'm trying to see if I see anything else that's touching, and I don't. But we are getting a, I don't, I don't see it. Yeah, I don't see that at all. But let me just see what I can do here. So let me clean the tip off of this and just see. And I'm gonna try to do this with you guys being able to watch, but it's, again, it's very it's not easy because I have to be able to see the pin at the same time and that makes it a little harder. Let me just see. Okay. 
and I'm pretty sure that those are not touching. So I'm really not sure unless there's something here. Let me check that. Okay, we cleared, we cleared that out as well. So all in all, it looks like the pins are fine, but now I'm curious to see if it's gonna work. So let's just see. Okay. Now, unfortunately, I've got my computer going crazy now because the first time I tried to connect it, it did not work. So I don't think I'm gonna be able to do this without restarting the, the PC. Oh, there we go. Look at that. So I think, okay, so that was that one pin. I don't think it was even connected. Now this, I'm gonna let go. This doesn't need to keep popping out, but check this out. Oh my God, okay. Let me just, let me just, rest let me just sign out. Okay, give me a second here. Yeah, yeah, okay. Let's see if I can sign out and get rid of this problem. All right, so it was one pin. I needed to get that pin uh, corrected on there. So now, let me just see if I can get back in. Just give me one second. And I'm sorry about that, guys. I usually would use a new USB port like I have here. I have a bunch of them, but I was trying to show you guys how to use one that you already had. So we're gonna see. Now I can tell you, Hopefully this USB, I don't have to restart the computer, I'm hoping, but you can see right now we've got, we've got our, our light blinking, okay? So there we go. Let me make sure that we get that. I don't like my USB cable very much because it's, so there it is. And let me go into Betaflight. Let's click connect and there we go. And look at that, we've got our flight controller back and, oh, you can't see that, sorry, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. My apologies. I thought you guys could see this, but I forgot I'm not sharing the screen. Let me try this again. I forgot I restarted it. That's just very stupid on my part. I'm ready? Here, I'll show you now what I'm looking at. God darn it. My apologies. There. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. I thought I had the computer screen up, but you can see. There we go. So we're back up and running. USB is back on there. And again, guys, all you have to do is just be careful, okay? I mean, it's, it's staying. It's on there very sturdy now. Uh, I have no worries about this. All right, and so I'll take it off and then we'll put it back on and we should be back in and there we go. Okay, no errors, no nothing. So I'm just gonna go ahead now and put some good hot glue around it just to kind of seal it in. But overall, this thing is perfect. And we'll go back now to beta flight, open it back up because I thought you guys saw this. All right, and we're gonna click connect and there you go. Okay, so we've got our USB and everything is looking uh, great. I have no problem with it at all, okay? Uh, let's see other than that. Let's reset. Let's calibrate and then we could do I mean heck we could just we could just uh, Actually, let me connect this here quick. My USB doesn't sit flat. This is a really not the best cable to ever use But it's the only one I had available, but if you want to just test this watch, so we're gonna go to CLI type version uh, in, There you go, and we're using the Onibus F4 So we'll just go ahead and update the firmware just to show you that it's working good. Let's go ahead and do that Okay, and we'll go ahead and load the firmware. I might get a different cable, that's for sure. Let's flash it. And there we go. We'll do the load real quick. All right, let it flash. I'm gonna turn my uh, soldering iron off now. But guys, this is like, um, here, let me, just, let me just help you. Okay, so, so if you're gonna be in this industry for a long time, you're gonna run through all kinds of things. You're gonna break your USB ports. You're gonna break a lot of things and you're gonna have to replace a lot of things. <coughs> you don't need expensive equipment. The microscopes are very cheap. I have them on my website. You can find them at cyclonefpv.com. Soldering irons are cheap. I have them on my website. The flux paste, uh, everything you saw me use here today is on the website, including the USB ports. We just added those. Excuse me. So um, get to practicing with this. And if you have a board that's fried, start pulling the chips off. Start heating them up and removing them, and that should help you. All right? Uh, so let me get back to this real quick and show you what we got. So there we go. And uh, we've got our new firmware loaded, so we're going to click Connect. We're going to apply our custom defaults here. 
Okay, let's connect again. And there you go. And everything's good to go. Okay, so you can see, there it is. Right, everything's good. Okay, guys, I hope this helps. Um, I hope that little bit helps you there. Um, if you have any questions about it, let me know. But do try to save your own equipment. Uh, it's not a bad idea to give it a shot. Uh, other than that, if you have any questions, please go to our webpage. Uh, you can go to our website and go to the pages uh, forward slash contact. There's a link below right there. And then, as always, please follow us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'd always appreciate your support. Other than that, guys, it is Sunday. Go have fun with your family. Peace, God bless. And most of all, safe flying. Talk to you later. Peace. Thank you.